What is viability theory? The theory was mathematically formalized by Jean-Pierre Robin, and it looks like this. A bit complicated, isn't it? In plain English, it would be. It makes it possible to define the conditions for the viability of a property of a dynamic system. That is, a set of limits beyond which there is no possibility to prevent the system from losing the property. It's still a little blurry? What we need is a simple, concrete example. Let's look at a boat, a rower, a river, a branch in the river, and a waterfall. For this to end well, the boat mustn't overturn. To keep this from happening, the rower needs to stay in a certain area of the river. If the rower doesn't choose the right path, he will be drawn toward the waterfall and the boat will overturn. He hasn't reached the waterfall yet, but now his situation is no longer viable because he can no longer resist the current. He has reached a point of no return. In this example, the places in the river where the rower can still resist the current constitute all of the conditions for maintaining a viable situation. That is, the rower's viability kernel. It is this kernel that viability theory allows us to identify. So, did you understand the principle by which a system persists? Let's apply this theory to the field we're interested in, agroecology. Here are the four arguments that demonstrate its usefulness. Let's take another example, since it fits well, a prairie. This theory makes it possible to take into account the agroecological system's change over time. It considers all of the dimensions of the system to look for the conditions of its viability. It can even anticipate uncertain or high-risk elements. Above all, it also enables the discovery of a set of solutions, not just one. At INRA, in collaboration with CNRS and IRSTEA, we use viability theory to develop solutions which strike a balance between agricultural production and respect for the environment. The constraints represent the needs and objectives of a broad range of actors. It's already working. In Europe, for exploring agro-environmental measures. In Southern Africa, for understanding the dynamic of shrub encroachment in savannas. In the West Indies, for improving soil quality through crop diversity. Want to learn more? Visit us on the Science for Action and Development website.